Give it up for Stacy who made this video. Here we go, guys. Cue up Danielle's video. What you feel like something bad's coming. Anything that affects the women in the future, you run by me first. You don't run this prison.
convention. You mean what sort of convention? I said, I, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm here because I'm thinking he doesn't even know what I do. I'm here for a, a Wentworth convention. Know who you are. And he went, what's that? He went, oh, can I, can I watch the show? I said, yeah, you can. He said, what, what's show, what station is it on? What network? And I was like, it's on Netflix. And suddenly he was like, oh, okay. Suddenly so he started to get really, really friendly. And, um, and then he, <laughs> and I was thinking, I'm like, oh, they're not gonna let me in the country. It's a prison show. Because he said, what's it about? I said, it's, it's about, women in prison, and I think he was kind of like, is this like an Australian version of bad guys? Whatever it is, it bad cops? No, bad boys? What's the... Oh, cops. Cops! Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, I'm just an actress. I'm not really in prison. <laughs> so, um, hi. Welcome. So what we're gonna do is, we have two, we have two long lines of people waiting to ask oh, questions. Oh, really? I was just gonna talk. Yeah. That's cool too. Yes. Oh, of course I'll let you ask me questions. So Only if they're good. Yeah. So we'll start over here on the right. We'll bounce from side to side. What's your name? Where are you from? Yikes. This is happening. Uh, this is happening. I know I feel just as nervous, you guys. Please don't, because I'm just like, oh my god, I had a fashion crisis. I put on something different to my other photographs this morning. No, you did great. Yeah, and then I dyed my hair last night. shave the underneath of your yeah. hair. or is it different here in the States? And then also, uh, when you were reading that uh, B was going to go down the Lady Road, did you look at that? B was going to go down, you should yeah. just say that. Before season four, about Bee's um, evolution and the the kind of sensuality that she, we'd never seen her explore on the show. She'd only ever been the uh, recipient of huge amount of aggression or um, psychological manipulation. So, for me, it was like, what about? And we've seen her be the victim of domestic violence, uh, and there was a little bit of that spark with Will, but I never thought that that should have been something that was ever acted on that it was more a friendship. So for me, for her to be able to have that experience of, of exploring her se sensuality, apart from by her own hand. <laughs> which is a perfectly viable means of love making, I think. You know, we should all love ourselves every day. That includes you. Which is also a beautiful thing. It's both consensual by both parties. I think that um, with that, it was like I was emphatically for it, and I I loved that storyline. I I think that that sometimes sexuality is a very complex, interesting beast, mistress, and sometimes not. Sometimes very clear. But I love the fact that 
but that by virtue of that relationship, it brought into the fold the conversation around around labels, around what is love, what is what do you, how do you identify with your feelings and so forth. So I was really, it was amazing for me the feedback because B had always been such a supported character by everybody, but to have that storyline, then suddenly, yeah, I got a whole surge of uh, feelings. <laughs> Great question. My female <laughs> fan base suddenly went. <laughs> Uh, next one's gonna be on this side. Hi. What's your name? Fatima. Hi, Fatima. And nice to meet you. Like the vision of Fatima. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first off, uh, I fucking love you. I love you. That's how we say that here. Yeah. I fucking love that. <laughs> I just want to say, just a before I, the, the, the pride flag, I was walking down the street and I'm really bummed I didn't go back and get this t shirt, but it was, you guys have probably seen it everywhere. It was on one of those cheap little stalls and it said, fuck you, you fucking fuck. <laughs> and I was like, now that is New York, right? And I'm thinking, I would love to wear that today. Just to, I should have got it just to kind of like in response to your political climate. <laughs> My cousin Fiona couldn't be here, so if you can just shout her out. Hi, hey, Fiona! <laughs> um, Sorry you couldn't be here. <laughs> Everyone say hi, Fiona. Hi, Fiona. You fucking fuck. <laughs> I was really good at alliteration in English. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Um, you have to make a phone call to your fucking shit husband, Harry, uh, about your daughter's death. And, um, sorry, I got serious. Um, how, how deep did you have to go in order to do that scene? It was I, I didn't have to do anything. It just all came. I think, you know, for me, the acting or re is reacting and it's listening to your body and it's listening to the story. And I don't know how many parents there are in here, or caregivers, people who have, you know, got, got to, yeah, or anyone for that matter. When you love someone, doesn't matter who it is, and that person is taken from your life, you know, I, for me, it was just a matter of being in that situation and just being there, being present, which is how I work. I don't need to think about puppies dying. I, you know, I had lived with that character for a while at that point, and I had, you know, for me, it was the only thing that B had was Debbie. So for me, that moment, and I didn't, I didn't, we didn't have to work that hard for that scene. It was brutally emotional for me, but I didn't have to work hard to get there. It just came. And then I'll tell, I'll tell you one thing about that scene and that whole loss in the storyline, which helps inform B's journey um, of revenge and, you know, a, an emotional complication, she wants to take her own life and all of that, like very human responses to great loss. Um, I've received so many letters from people who have lost children to say how much they could relate to that moment. And for me, that was just like, I couldn't. You could give me an award for that work and that will never beat when someone writes to you to say, that's how I felt. So I knew that. Yeah. Bye, Fatima. Bye, Fiona. Next one's gonna be over here. Hi. We're gonna be here for ages, aren't we? Yes. yes. You guys mind? You guys good? Hi. I have not met you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. My name's Karen. Hi, Karen. Uh, just a quick one. I like the cookies. <laughs> My jacket nearly fell off. <laughs> Who decided when you were going to leave the show? Was that your choice because you wanted to leave or when they decided to kill you off? Was it the... So thank you for that question. I uh, did... It wasn't my choice. Oh. 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 That was the noise that I made in the office when they told me. Thank you, Karen. It wasn't my choice, uh, but 
I did, you know, I, I sat with the producer for a while talking about why they made that choice and I spoke to all the producers and everyone. It was disappointing and it was shocking, but I think it was, you know, it was a good choice because... No, not for us. No? no. no. been disappointing for everyone and that's drama though you know like look look at for me it was really sad because I was saying goodbye to a show I was saying goodbye to my friends I was saying goodbye to, goodbye to a character who I'd played for a long time that was deep within me and I um, but but what it did show me was how much love everyone had for B and that good drama you know it, it can twist and turn and it can mess with you and that is a sign of good drama you know so really think about it ladies if they kept B in the story, then she'd probably be relegated to, um, excuse the pun, but a B storyline, not an A storyline. Mm. So they kind of wanted her to go out on a high. <laughs> yes, disappointing. Personally, I think she's still the one that's protection. Yeah. 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 She comes back orange hair. Next one's gonna be down here on the left. So you're saying there's a chance, I think. Right here. <laughs> Thanks, Harry, for your question. Yeah, thank you, Karen. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm Diane. Hi, Diane. Um, I fucking love you. <laughs> Everyone says fucking here. I feel completely at home. I really, really do. And I really miss your character and everything that you did on the show. And I just wanted to know what inspires you. Um, I see your work that you do um, when you went to Africa. So I'm just like, what inspires you? What inspires you to do that and just work with people on the whole? Um, I, you know, I, I think the, I, I um, oh, the, the the world is such a crazy place, isn't it? Yes. You know, and, and humans are motherfucking fucked up. <laughs> Um, it's, it's a massive question. Thanks for answering, asking it. But I, I just think that if I was to lie down at the end of my days and feel like I haven't done what I could do for communities, whether it be a small thing or a large thing, then I would be really regretful. And there's a lot of people that need help. Yeah. Really, oh, yeah. oh, but I, and I think also because you know, and I'm not saying that you have to have a position of any kind of notoriety or power or anything to help affect change, because it can simply be, and I've said this before, you just smile at someone walking down the street who looks like they're having a bad day, or stop and go, hey, are you okay? You know, like, that's all you need to do, really, for me, because I have a public platform. That public platform was great. <laughs> I, have a, I have a profile. I don't see how I couldn't do something. Why not use that for something? You know, it's, I find it strange to only, you know, be a voice for my own cause as opposed for, other, for others. Be the change! What, what's, be the change, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, because everyone can. And, you know, there, there are so many people that don't have a voice. Or, the, sorry, that do, but can't be heard. And so I say, well, what, what can we all do to help your friend, your neighbour, your family, strangers on the other side of the world? So that's, I choose to do that because I can, and I want to. And it's for nothing other than to, you know, reach out to my global community and say, hey, we're all equals. <laughs> See you next Tuesday sometimes, but have no doubts about that. Like, really. I'm not, I am far from perfect. I have my up days, I have my down days. Sometimes I'm a complete cow. You know, I try my best. Really, I do. But, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm human. Like, I'm sorry I'm not from the stage, only so you can see me, but I should be sitting down there with you so we're all equal. We're all eye to eye. But we are, and that's the way I see it. I steal to steal from my son's money box though? 
Hey. Next one. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, hey, Danielle. Hey. My name is Michael. I'm from New Jersey. I'm Michael from New Jersey. <laughs> so most of us fell in love with you as Queen Bee, but I fell in love with you as Queen Ethany. Oh. <laughs> how many people watch Zena? Get away with the sounds. <laughs> So, I was wondering if you could share with us your favorite moment on set from Xena? Uh, okay, um, so for those of you who don't know, do you, does anyone know who's Xena? I, I play... I play um, Queen Ethany and I was so terrible in the show. I can't tell you, you know, it was like... It was I the first, No, it was, I was terrible. So, so stop! Shut up already. <laughs> I shut you guys up finally. Um, I, I was, um, it was quite a few years ago now, like a good 25 years ago or something, and it was the first time that I'd ever been on an American show, so I had to speak with an American accent, and back then I didn't watch a lot of American TV. I think New Zealand only had one TV station. Yeah. It was, on, it was you know, with a population of 25. Um, <laughs> so, I, my American accent was terrible. I'd be like, Zener! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Zener, the centaurs are coming! <laughs> Quick! Run to the shelter! <laughs> I was so bad. So please don't bring that up. <laughs> oh, I have to come down there and fix that game. Over here. Hey, Danielle, you're good, Kilda. Oh, thank you. This this beautiful woman. I'm part of a of a collective called Bridge the Gap. For those of you who don't know, and this beautiful woman here has got one of our jackets on. So yeah, if you don't know what it is, check it out. <laughs> thank you. Uh, actually, Diane saw my question about the charities, and I was going to mention the jacket. So my name is Jules. I'm from Toronto. Hi. Hey. <laughs>
to stay tuned. Can you, can, you can hound this lady, not me. <laughs> anyway, sit down, y'all. Okay, we've got some more questions. I still have my question. Oh, I so I was in the middle of saying something. I think she was about you, to You guys are not going to be able to do anything I say from this point on, are you? No, sorry. You used uh, her saying California or Toronto as a masterful segue. That's okay. You're going to keep an eye on me. I'm terrible. So, uh, I know you've spent time in Toronto. Just wondering if you had any future plans or near plans to ever do any production. In Hollywood North, you know. Yeah, I, look, I would love to work anywhere in the world as long as it's a great job and great character. So I've just been back to New Zealand. I did a, a show in my hometown. I'm not actually Australian. For those of you who don't know, I'm a Kiwi. Um, and I went back and did a show called Fresh Eggs. Which is probably one of the more crazy characters I've ever played. Uh, did you guys like it? Lots and lots of fun playing uh, Lulu. Um, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Off the chain. I know, right? I don't think I've ever got to say cum guzzler on TV before. <laughs> oh, right? Oh, yay. Cool. Um, yeah, so I, look, I work anywhere. So if you guys have got any jobs anywhere for this, this weak curly headed, orange curly headed person, I'm free. Next one over here on this side. Hey. How are you doing, Danielle? How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? You about a bitch like me, because not only do I love you and Zena, I love your Hercules too, mommy. Oh my God, it's so embarrassing. Or look, her curlers. Here comes Zena. Tour, well, not three day, a three-day tour in Australia with your bike, Harley Davidson. Um, I also ride as well. Uh, like, there's like, I ride a Honda CB650F. Um, I wanted to know from you, like, what are your, like, what are your favorite bikes besides, you know, Harley? Like, what do you own? Like, well, I'm, I'm a Harley ambassador, so I can't actually say anything. Come on. Man. <laughs> there's a Harley representative right here who's got a red dot right in the middle of my forehead. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I love riding motorbikes. I found it, I actually really, really uh, started riding when I was working on Wentworth, more so because I really needed a place to escape from all of the weekly grind and the character stuff that I had to go through. So I joined a motorcycle garage where you can put together, take apart and put together your own bike. And so <laughs> someone likes engines. Someone likes a bit of grease on the hand. <laughs> so, um, and I loved going riding because, I, I, you know, when you're riding a motorcycle, or for me anyway, I you can't think about anything else other than the road. If you do, you're dead. So it was a really good way for me to turn my brain off and get out of the prison and the sort of the character. Um, so that's so motorbikes have been a really lovely meditation for me. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, I'm riding a 12, an Iron 1200, which is pretty fly. But I, I like, you know, like a little soft tail, a little sporty, good for around town. Um, you know, they, they, I like the um, low rider. Yeah. Who else yeah. rides motorbikes here? Yeah. Nice. Just get a girl game skin. Yeah. You guys are all so much cooler than me. I'm going to go this side now. <laughs> Thanks, hon. Hi. Over here. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, your character actually helped me like be strong, and I'd like to know has uh, playing that character helped you with anything in your life that you have gone through? Uh, I think oh, has it? Yes, it has actually. Uh, I think um, firstly, I just want to say um, you know. The, when I hear back from people that the show has helped them, for me, that's a kind of form of therapy for me. Because sometimes I think, oh God, what am I doing in the world? I'm playing characters on TV. Well, I'm not doing anything. But I forget that what we do is entertain people and help people escape from their own lives sometimes. And even though it might be a brutal reflection of what can happen in, in life, it still helps people 
you know, either escape or find strength to move on from domestically violent relationships or find love or open up or feel solid in their own choices or not, whatever. And so when I hear back from people that it really helped them, for me, I just go, oh, that's why I do what I do. Because sometimes I feel a bit self-indulgent, you know, oh, here I am, and I'm an actor, I turn up, I, you know, put on the makeup, and I say the lines, and I go home. <laughs> um, but for me, after doing so, I'm just, I'm, I feel terrible that you're sitting down. No. You okay? No. <laughs> When I was at the middle of season three, I started to feel really wrung out. I think it was because the character and the work was, you know, it was pretty full on and I was going home and then having to just be a mum, as a lot of you here probably do, go to work and then you, you don't get to come home and stick your feet up on the couch, you've got to then cook the dinners and make the lunches and da 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 da. And I think for me, at that point I went, well, I'm starting to feel a bit wobbly. <laughs> So I, I had to check in with myself and I had to maybe go and get some help because, and so it helped, I guess that it helped me look in, at my own world and my own life and my own self-preservation. And, and it was good to do that because I think everyone needs to every now and then, you know, before the wheels really fall off. So it kind of did help me. But, it, it, you know, like just hearing people's stories, understand this big wide world out there and everyone's got stories, you know? Like I've had the opportunity of meeting so many people and just hearing, well, that's very humbling. Well, I just want to thank you for playing such a strong character so well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So before we get to the next question, I know a lot of you guys here are big fans. You guys shipped B and Ali. You're a big fan of Bali, right? So we've got a little bit of a surprise for you. If someone wanted to come out and say hi to Danielle really quick, we're going to bring Kate back out on stage. Bang! Is this on? Are you never on? There you go. Are we? Are we on? Are we on? There we go. relationship on screen has been really incredible. Yeah, it's extraordinary. Someone asked me during my Q&A, um, oh, did, <laughs> did I feel like um, I had a responsibility to kind of make this as special as it was going to be, but I don't think either of us really anticipated what it was going to be. No, no, and that was, you know, it was so, uh, you know, it, it really ripped people's hearts out, yeah. the, the whole thing that, you know, no one was yeah, happy and everything, but, but, you know, you got, you, you know, I love the idea that it just, you know, there was a fleeting moment of beauty and purity and, you know, like really, it was so palpable and beautiful and for Kate and I to have done that scene together and the way it was shot, like the whole choreography of our lovemaking scene and everything, we just wanted to be really and beautiful and, and, you know, like, it's, 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 it's really, it's a, um, you know, that the whole thing can be so dodgy sometimes, but it, from the feedback that we've got, it really landed with people. And, you know, so for me, I just go, it was all worth it. It was a beautiful moment. <laughs> and the one that I think the one, the one and only upshot 
of, of it ending so quickly and brutally was that the love was kind of preserved. It yeah. never got tainted in, you know, should you run off with somebody else? That's right. <laughs> I don't feel the same way about them. I promise you, all of them. because I had no reason to, because B's journey was, it was her first time in prison. But Nicole De Silva and I got to go into the local women's prison and, and meet some of the inmates um, and have a tour with the prison warden just to get a feel for just, you know, the experience and the landscape of what it is to be part of the criminal justice system. Um, but I have also done a lot of work with uh, women, uh, female inmates and, um, and parolees and women that are just about to come out and or youth that are going into the system in New Zealand. So I've visited quite a few correctional facilities there and I do workshops with some of the youth there. Just um, who are, who are, you know, just on that cusp of maybe, you know, just making shitty choices. You know, like having a hard life and not having the right guides or the right support. So I do a lot of work in New Zealand with those youth. So I have been part of the system, yeah. It's not a fair, it's not a fair, you like um, everyone, I was just talking before about that show, um, uh, When They See Us. Have you guys been watching that? If you haven't, you should. Yeah. Thank you. Thank and, you so and all much. And for your career in the system. So you guys are good, you can take a seat, I'm sorry. This is gonna be the last question for Danielle over here on the left, Keep right one here. One more, just one more, right behind yeah. you. Okay. You yeah. gotta do this one right here. Oh, Samantha. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. No, that's okay. Um, I would say you're an amazing actress. You develop so well into your characters. I got everyone in my family hooked on this Wentworth show. You included my mom right there. Like, I loved you, like, everything. So, um, okay, so my question is, do you think that without Maxine as your muscle and your support and as a friend, you would be a successful taco? Mm. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I think that there was, I think there was something about B's moral stance that, that, that people responded to in there. I, I think that by virtue of her being associated with Maxine showed exactly where she was coming from and after a while I think the women really wanted that. I think people that are ruled by an iron fist, such as Jax, 
or even with Frankie with the drugs and everything, you know, I think after a while people probably were just uh, attracted to the way that B led them. And yeah, by the fact that I still had to become top dog because that was the storyline. <laughs> um, yeah, but I would like to think it was because it was who, of her, who she was rather than just Maxine being the muscle. Okay, thank yeah. you so much. Um, yeah, so quick shh. Can you kill me? If you wanted, to, you, you're the one who no. okay, can do whatever you want. Go, one more. One more question. One more question. You better remember when I was start singing a song. No pressure. Go. Last one, guys. Oh my goodness. Right? Well, congratulations. Thank you. So I wanted to thank you seriously for the show and to, um, you know, that it inspired me. But my question was, how has the show impacted you and your life? And kind of answered it through all the other ones. Well, I'm here. Yeah. Woo! I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the show. I'd be doing a Zena convention to about five people going, <laughs> oh, Zena. <laughs> um, it's impacted me once again by the amount of stories and the people that come to me in my life. And for the most part, 99.9% .9 of it has been absolutely positive, filled with love and support. And, and, and people bring me their knowledge and we get to share stuff. And, you know, I have a huge support for my career from the show um, and a great fan base. Um, you know, I, you, the role that I play has, you know, put me on an international platform along with some of the other roles I've played as well. So that's been amazing. But, you know, just travel and connection. And that's the beautiful thing. Like, a lot of you guys would have met each other on the internet, right? Yeah! yeah. So, you, you know, that is, is an amazing thing. And use those connections wisely and be kind. You know, we don't need to hear shitty comments about everything. There's enough shitty things going on with your Woo! leaders in this country, <laughs> But, um, yeah, it's just, you know, it's been a wonderful door opener for me. And I got to play an amazing, iconic, wonderful character. Can you come back? I would love to. I would love to come back. Do you think I would be jumping the shark too much though? No. No? Have you got this? You sending this with producers? <laughs> yeah, I, I really do think that I have to go because you guys have got things to do, yeah? Photos with you, photos with everyone I've else. I've got photographs of me. Give it up one more time for being <laughs> children and whatever else because sometimes you know it can be a painful thing to travel whether it be emotional physical psychological whatever but thank you so much for making it today and i'll see you in a photo oh my god yeah. 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 i fucking love you yeah. 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 give it up for her guys how cool is that? So guys, stay in your seats really quick. I'll, I'll make a few announcements. So um, the cake panel, uh, or round table I should say, is going on.